Hey, you guys. So it is Sunday now. Um, I'm not showing my face because I'm not dressed or anything. I look hideous. But um, yeah, um, long story short, when I got back to the hotel, my was already there. She found her way just like I knew she could. But then she wanted to start with me again. And it got to a point, I'm not going to get into it because I don't want to dwell on the negative. But she started, um, it got to a, a really bad place and I just said, get out. And because I'm the person I am and I don't want to leave people stranded, I called up her mom. And I said, look, I know she has family up here. I know you, you know people. Make sure she has a place to stay. And I told her everything that went on, and her mom's like, oh my god, I completely understand. Okay, yeah, I'll make sure she has a place. But then she gets down to the lobby, and she's trying to change her flight. I gave her her flight information so she could change her flight, because I said, I'm not paying for it. It's going to cost me a lot of money to change it last minute. And she goes down to the lobby, she's trying to get a room to stay over, overnight, and she's trying to change her flight. And people, she has the people at the lobby at that point begging me to let her stay in here until her flight because freaking because it cost two hundred dollars to change it last minute and i i looked at the people and i said to them i'm like i actually thought it'd be more expensive <laughs> like that's the whole reason i wasn't gonna pay for it. i thought it'd be more expensive than that but yeah anyways i i said you know what? get her get get her a separate bed bring it up to the room and they did that and then i said to myself like yeah, because for some reason this suite only has one bed. So, like, we've literally, we put a pillow down in the middle and we were splitting it. But, like, I said, get her a separate bed, bring it up to the room. And then I said, I said to her when I got back up, because I had to stay down there to extend my stay, because something was offered to me. I really can't go into it. That's why I couldn't vlog most of the day yesterday. But, like, something was offered to me. And I literally, like, I'm so excited, but, like, I have to just keep it on the down low. I don't want to jinx my chances or anything, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah. No, so I, so I said to her, like, look, when I got back up, I said to her, look, I'll change, I'll, I'll, I'll change your flight, okay? I, I said, how much do you need right now to change your, your flight to go into Tampa in the morning? She said 200 so I transferred her $200 via Zelle, and so yeah, when I woke up, she was gone. Bed money, she's gone. But anyways, I ordered insomnia cookies, and I literally, I ordered them with my cousins the other night, and I just ordered them again because I'm like, I can't help it, they're so good, but I had to, like literally I woke up, I forgot I ordered it last night, so the phone's ringing, it's like, you have a delivery. I'm like, oh shit, I was just about to shaving it in the shower. I completely forgot about this, so I run downstairs barefoot, haven't shaved, haven't showered, haven't done my hair, nothing. And I pick up my delivery, I'm like, oh my god, I completely forgot. <laughs> and so yeah, here's insomnia cookies. This is a tradition in New York. This is so good. I love this shit. They deliver, it's a late night cookie service, they're open until 2 a.m. And they deliver warm cookies to you. I had them set to deliver at a special at a certain time, but like, look at this. They're so good. Oh my god. I fucking love these. So yeah, I'm gonna pig out. Okay, you guys, you know what? Fuck it, I'm showing myself. Just from a distance so you can't see my facial hair. Um, <laughs> even though it's minor right now. But yeah, look, I'm gonna show you this. Once you bite into the cookie, look at that. Because they deliver it warm to you. So once you bite in, it's like all ooey and gooey and shit. What? Ooey and gooey? Who am I? <laughs> I need my coffee. No, but it's like, it's just like all, all gooey and melted and really good. This is like the best. This is the best right here. It's so fucking good. Also, you guys, I just want to say that Naya is not a bad person, so please don't hate on her. She just, she's had a lot of people hurt her. So when people actually care about her, she pushes them away because she's afraid of being hurt. And I actually can relate to that on a personal level, which is why I 
which is why I try to like just be there for her no matter what and it's why I haven't pushed her away fully yet but it's like it's why her number's not blocked it's why I haven't like left like pushed her away fully or anything because like literally I get where she's coming from I can relate to her it's like she's not a bad person she just she's afraid of being cared about because she's afraid of being hurt so uh, and I mean, I've, I I was like that for the longest time, so I can relate. But anyways, I mean, I woke up this morning and there was a text message from her, and I'm going to leave that right now so you can see it. So yeah, she left that text message. Um... Yeah, I just, at this point, it's obvious she's feeling bad about, just from that text, like, it's obvious she feels bad about everything, but it's like, I, I, at the same time that, she feels bad and stuff, like, she also like she had multiple chances and stuff and obviously like i'm not i'm not dumb or anything like i i'm i'm not dumb that sounded like i said i'm not dumb i'm not done i'm not d o n e i'm not done or anything i'm not like done with her i'm not like yo get out of my life or whatever obviously like i get where she's coming from i i don't i'm not mad at her i don't i'm not holding any grudges but I mean, I'm definitely, like, gonna have to see a lot more of an effort on her part of, like, realizing that certain people actually do care and that she's not gonna get hurt every time she doesn't need to push people away 24-7. I know there's a line from a song that really helped me. It was actually a Britney Spears song. Shocker. <laughs> but there's a line from a song that really helped me. It was, sometimes you just gotta trust, you gotta take that leap and let go. And it's so true. You, you just never know until you take the leap. Obviously be cautious, but if someone like really cares about you, they genuinely care, they're going out of your way, they've been there for you no matter what, you, you need to take a, a leap of faith, put a little bit of trust. Honestly, if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have found real friends and people who actually care. And I feel like she needs to do that also, like, honestly. But yeah, she needs to just trust people a little more. She's an amazing person, and there's more there's people more than just me who care about her and love her and support her and who will be there for her no matter what. And she needs to realize that. She's not going to get hurt and let down every time. I get she's afraid, but... You know what? You can't live your life in fear. I've been hurt so many fucking times, and... When I started pushing people away because I was afraid of being hurt, it only made things worse for me. When I was cautious, but I still, like, took that leap of faith. I made friends. I spoke to people. I let people in, but I wasn't, like, <clears throat> I wasn't revealing everything at once. And I was, like, trying to be cautious. And I always, like, I, I wanted the best, but I was prepared for the worst and stuff. Like, that's how I live now that's when I started being like that when I started being like okay like hope for the best prepare for the worst that's when I was that's when things started to look up for me that's when I actually found people because I wasn't pushing people away but I was never expecting them to actually care either. Like, I was prepared for something to happen. 
eventually I found people who truly cared. You just, you have to be cautious about it, is all I'm saying. Like, I, I'm really bad with words, but you have to be cautious. That's what I did, and I know that I wouldn't have found people if I hadn't done that. And if I hadn't, like, started putting my trust in people, putting my faith in people, but at the same time, like, stayed cautious, stayed prepared, I wouldn't have found people. She, she, she needs to do that. Anyways, yeah, I'm gonna... I'm obviously, it's, it's pretty obvious, I'm bad with words, I just woke up, I'm eating cookies, haven't had coffee, <laughs> haven't had real food, so, um, I'm, I'm gonna stop right now, and I'll see you after I get out of the shower. Hello vlog, I am back. I am out of the shower, looking fresh, looking fresh, who am I? <laughs> no, I'm out of the shower, looking good, I still haven't had coffee. But, hey, at least I'm motivated. Might be a little crazy, but I'm motivated. So, I'm in Grand Central. Headed to the subways. And, I'm gonna go to Times Square and do a bit of shopping. I think I have to go down here. So yeah, I'm gonna go to Times Square and do a bit of shopping. And just try to live life to the fullest. Um, meeting up with some friends later tonight, so I'm really excited. And that's about it. I'll start vlogging again when I get to Times Square. Hello vlog. Okay. So I'm in Times Square. I came across this, um, this new ocean exhibit that takes you through like this virtual Pacific Ocean thing that I had to, I had to purchase a ticket and go see it because I was like, this is really freaking cool. Uh, they apparently opened last October, which explains why I've never heard of it, because I wasn't here since that time. I wasn't in this area of Times Square in a long time, so this is cool, though. So I'm going to try and vlog as much of it as I can. Okay, you guys, it's 6.15, which means the next walkthrough show is starting. I think it's a walkthrough show. I'm not sure. I think it is. But here's my little pamphlet they handed me. This thing's pretty cool. Honestly, it's apparently it's by National Geographic. It's called Encounter Ocean Odyssey. Larger than life. Um, I, I don't freaking know. Oh, the name's over here. Okay. Yeah, it's called Encounter Ocean Odyssey, the ultimate undersea experience um it says it's breathtaking but i'll be the judge of that <laughs> um apparently it's like a walk through show or whatever and you get to like experience the ocean up close like the pacific ocean without being in it i don't freaking know and apparently it's like one of a kind. So yeah, I'll be the judge of that. Holy shit, what did I do? The effects in here are crazy. The visual effects. The visual effects I'm getting looking at myself on the camera like, with this kind of lighting and shit. I'm, I'm really weird. <laughs> this is fascinating though. Honestly, this kind of lighting and the visual effects, it makes my face look like kind of longer. Or is it just me? I think it's making my face look longer when I do this. Okay. Leave a comment down below and let me know if it's just me or if it's really doing that. Once again, I haven't had coffee today, so that might be part of it. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna try and vlog as much as I can. 
we'll see what happens. Pacific Ocean, then we're going to end up at the sunny coast of California. Along the way, you're going to be able to see a lot of things like a humble squid now, which is one of Earth's most ferocious carnivores. It has about 35,000 to 40,000 red sharp teeth lying along its southern spot and arms and tentacles, okay? And also going to be able to interact with some of our California sea lions we got here, all right? The California sea lions we got here will mimic your movements. If you jump, they'll jump. If you spin, it will hit a spin That's for cool. you. If you do a little curl right there, like they might do a black back flip and hit the tails with the nose, okay? They'll do a lot, a lot of things. It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Please feel free to take as many photos and videos as you like, okay? Um, we just ask that you please do not use your flash. We don't want to disturb the account for the other guests around you. Also, please silence your phone. And if you have um, social media, feel free. And I also encourage you to tag us in it. Um, hashtag Ocean Odyssey at Matt Geo Encounter, okay? Right now, I'm going to give you all some um, maps. And then we're going to get started really, 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 really soon. Here you are. It's a map. Thank you. All right, here we go, everybody. Have some fun.
welcome to the sandy grass beds of the Solomon Islands. The small area living here will do their best to avoid you. These grass beds are home to a host of marine life, most of which are very popular in the aquarium industry, leading to their decline in the wild. I will most definitely point them out when we come in, when we approach them. Beyond this sand flat, we're going to go on a swim. called 
bioluminescence. Those jellyfish that you saw just now are also bioluminescent. Right along the screen, the touch the split fin flashlight. Touching real coral would kill it. Those split fin flashlight fish are out there hunting for copods. Alright, both the bioluminescent but the larger split fin flashlight fish can turn its light on and off with the blink of its eyes. Now, if you notice below your feet on the seabed, you're going to have some sea serpents. One is a lime green, that is a short fin boss radio. The other one is a striped sea serpent, which is a yellow lipped sea crate. Okay, yellow lipped sea crate is a um, very, very, very poisonous sea serpent. It comes in the water to feed and to hunt, it goes on land to rest and to breathe. Out in the water here, you got the power zones, which are six cell organisms that group together to form one colony that's about a half inch long. When those colonies continue to clone each other over and over again until the final product is about 65 feet in length, okay? Open on one end, close on the other end. It is a filter view. The flashing on the seabed is called uh, gray soft coral. It's just like the rest of the coral reef around you. He said it's still in or soft like or tree like like a plant. We can move on out to the open ocean. We're about to be in Hawaii, all right? When we go in here, we're gonna be able to hear the sounds of dolphins, porpoises, humpback, and orca whales. You can sit on in. Please have a seat. All of these benches were made from plastic that was poured out of our oceans and recycled to make these lovely benches for you all. That's cool. Please have a seat. This is gonna be an amazing experience for everybody.
please continue your journey across the Pacific Ocean toward the hunting ground of the Humboldt squid. I wonder if I can do that when in editing. Because I can barely catch any of that on camera, but what I just saw was really funny. Yeah. Can I say why is it in Mexico in a place called the Humboldt Current? This is where the Humboldt squid gets its name from, okay? It's one of Earth's most ferocious carnivores. It can sometimes be cannibalistic. Um, Humboldt squid only lives up to be about a year old because you have sometimes the older members feeding on the younger or the healthier members of the sloth feeding on the hurt and weaken. All right? They travel about 12 and 1500 uh, in the sloth, okay? They literally reside about 300 feet below the surface. Um, it's fair, I mean, I wouldn't get in the water anywhere near the Humboldt current. I, that's just me. You can be a brave soldier if you want. You know, heroes all the way down here. Um, but me, for the other hand, no. Um, their hunting tactic, specifically why I would never go in the water with them, okay? They come up and grab you, pull you down into a depth where you faint. You pass out. You faint. Then they eat you alive. So come on in here right between these two pillars. All right. Between these two pillars. Right between these two pillars is the safest place. That got dark quick. <laughs> you are now at a depth of 300 feet. Little moonlight penetrates. These lanternfish are bioluminescent and a favorite food of the Humboldt squid who rise from the deep at nighttime to hunt. The Humboldt is an aggressive carnivorous predator known by some as the Red Devil. Each has razor-sharp teeth on the suckers that line each arm, so one Humboldt might have as many as 40,000 teeth. They hunt anything and are even aggressive to each other. That's awesome. They're out there now.
through the night and have journeyed across the Pacific to arrive at the coast of North America as the sun took a dark turn really quick, wait. Hi. Hey everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Northern California. You all survived, so congratulations. Round of applause, round of applause. Uh, hi. Um, so we're now here at the beginning of the Kelp Wars, okay? Kelp is not a plant, just food for thought, okay? Kelp is a um, form of algae. It's brown algae as a matter of fact. Plants have a root system, and kelp has no such thing. Kelp is literally anchored to the bottom of the seabed by something they call a whole bag. Just a cross shaped road attached to the rocks and things like that, okay? Um, kelp grows over one foot in one day. And the most ideal times, they, um, they grow over two feet in one day. They quicker than, quicker than, um, bamboo does. Talking about your heart. Quicker than bamboo does, all right? It's also very, very, very important to the sustainability of our lives. Okay? Kelp is found in the world, but before it was found in the world, the body was only a big percent of oxygen that we breathe every day. So unless you're a superhero or a superhero, that's your preference. No. Alright? You cannot survive on 48% oxygen. Alright? As I just mentioned, kelp is not a plant because it does not have a, a, a root system, but it does keep its nutrients from somewhere. Its um, nutrients is called a well. There is a, a candy offshore, just like grain, just like all right, on the tip of the water, about the same size of it, as a matter of fact. And as I mentioned, we're going to go to California around Monterey Bay. This canyon starts around Monterey Bay at a place called Moss's Land. It's about 400 kilometers seabound. Certain points of this canyon, it can go down to 4,000 meters deep, okay? So, there's also something called turbidity current erosion. Everybody here probably have heard of how water erodes rocks, make them smooth, you know, waterfalls or riverbeds, things like that. Well, the downflowing current going downhill of those or down cliff of those um, cliffs in that canyon picks up sediments and minerals along the way down. When it gets down to the bottom of the um, canyon, just like an avalanche hits snow up in the air, those sediments and minerals come back up to the surface of the um, water, to the top. Along the way, the blades of the kelp draws in those nutrients, right? Now, the kelp blades have these bubbles, gas chambers on the bottom of them. You know, on the bottom left hand corner of that diagram. Those bubbles right there are to keep the kelp leaves, I mean, the kelp blades, going and facing towards the sun so it can still receive the sunlight, all right? So, minerals paired with the sunlight, photosynthesis still happens, thank goodness, right? And oxygen is generated. It's released out into the atmosphere for us to breathe, okay? So we can, kelp is very, very important to the sustainability of our lives. We're about to go through a kelp course. <laughs> if you feel like you want to, you can touch this water right here. It is water. Is it really? All right, it's water. It just looks like it's going to Hey guys, welcome. We are about to dive deep into the kelp forest. Super exciting. As we go in, a couple base rules. One, we're going to stay with our group at all times. It's actually very easy to get lost in there. We're also gonna make sure that our hands are out in front of us at all times and that we're not running. Because if you hit into the kelp, it really hurts. And if you're gonna hit anywhere, it's better to hit on your hands. Or escape predators in the shelter of the kelp. Thank you, I'm gonna Um If you are claustrophobic or don't feel comfortable being in an enclosed space where you're getting lost, come talk to me, okay? Okay. All right, first group, how many? Okay. Okay, this one. 
in there. This is cool, honestly. This is insane. This is really freaking cool. It's like one of those like fun house things. Like a, I'm impressed. Holy shit. This way. This is cool, honestly. How have I not gotten trapped yet? How have I not gotten trapped yet? Holy shit. This is really cool. Okay, my camera cut off of me because I ran out of space.
there you have the Krill, National Geographic calls Krill, the mule that runs the world's great ecosystem. Now, whether you the Krill or the Northern Anchovy, and just like the circle of life, what comes to eat the Northern Anchovy? Area, please feel free to come to the Nat Geo Encounter Ocean Odyssey. Take a dive. <laughs> you guys should definitely come. I was really impressed. That was really cool. I was skeptical at first because it was like I was told one of a kind, but I was really impressed. You guys should really come if you're in the New York area and go follow his Instagram. <laughs> you too. Bye. That was really freaking cool. Oh my god. So this is a That was so cool. That was really freaking cool. Okay, you guys. So I went in here very skeptical because they said one of a kind and all that. I was like, I'll be the judge of that. That was really fucking awesome and I really recommend you guys go check it out. Um, that one part where I couldn't capture what I was seeing on camera, I'm going to try and adjust the lighting and editing. I'm not sure how it's going to come out though. You guys, there's freaking preacher people right here. Like talking about Jesus and doing anti gay protests. So I'm gonna go up to them and tell them off real quick. Yo, religion is like a penis. It's fine to have one, it's fine to be proud of it, but please don't whip it out in public and start waving it around. And please don't try and shove it down my children's throats. Bye. That was a billboard sign that I saw on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> that I pulled over to take a picture of and I put it all over my social media because I thought it was brilliant <laughs> and I also thought it was fucking hilarious because why the hell did they allow them to put that up but <laughs> it's so true <laughs> like no one wants religion shoved down their throats like leave us the hell alone <laughs> so I just had to tell them to fuck off I had to tell them to fuck off like it was I just had to tell them that. Hey you guys, I'm back in my hotel room getting ready to head back out. But I just want to say, like, ever since last night when Naya pulled her crap, and there's just this one thing she said that, like, really stuck out, which was, like, I'm calling your mom, and then she was like, I'm calling my mom, and I'm like, what the hell? Like, those two things really stuck out to me, and ever since then, like... I've had the same line from a Paramore song stuck in my head. If you guys don't know the Paramore song, Ain't It Fun? If you don't know it, you haven't lived. But, like, yeah. 
So, like, if you know the song, though, there's this one part that's like, Don't go crying to your mama Cause you're on your own in the real world Don't go crying to your mama Cause you're on your own in the real world I mean... You have to know that song. If you don't, you haven't lived. But that one repetitive part that's like, Don't go crying to your mama Cause you're on your own in the real world. It's been stuck in my head since she pulled that. I don't know why, but it's stuck in my head. Well, I mean, I kind of know why. But <laughs> yeah, I can't get it out of my head now. Help. <laughs> Ain't it good to be on your own? Ain't it fun you can't count on no one? Ain't it good to be on your own? Ain't it fun you can't count on no one? Ain't it fun? Sorry, it's still stuck, it's still stuck in my head. I don't know what to do. Sunglasses at night because I'm bougie like that. I'm just kidding. I am such a dork. Okay. So... My ride's literally gonna be here in like one minute, so I'm just like sitting on the, on the street waiting. Well, not on the street, obviously, but I'm sitting, or standing, better yet, I'm standing on the curb waiting for my ride, which will be here in like one minute. Okay, and off we go. Don't go crying. To your mama, cause you're on your own in the real world. Don't go crying to your mama, cause you're on your own in the real world. Ain't it fun living in the real world? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ain't it good? Being all alone Ain't it good to be on your own? Ain't it fun you can't count on no one? Ain't it good to be on your own? Ain't it fun you can't count on no one? Ain't it fun? As you guys can see, that song is still stuck in my head. You guys, I'm literally so fucking excited. I have Lady Gaga's address, and I'm going to her apartment tomorrow. I am probably not gonna get to meet her, but I am getting to go to her apartment tomorrow, her penthouse apartment overlooking Central Park, and I'm really excited. Oh my god, like I'm freaking out. You guys, I still can't get over this. Why is... My fucking hotel room smaller than the hotel bathroom. I'm so confused and I still have my reading glasses on and I don't know why. But why? And why? The fucking phone by the toilet, I don't get it. But like literally the bathroom's smaller than the room. I'm so confused. I mean the bathroom's bigger than the room. I'm so confused. Like, literally, I don't get it. Why is the bathroom bigger than the room? Although, this fucking garden out here is literally everything, like... I love that I'm in, like, the garden suite. I love it. I really love that instead of penthouse suites, they have a garden suite. That's pretty cool. Like, literally, the entire suite is surrounded by a garden, and it's really fucking cool. You guys, so I'm outside of Gaga's apartment, and they have a sign right here that says, open house today, Premier Plaza, district properties for sale and lease. Like, I really kind of want to get an apartment here. It sounds like it'd be really cool. Like, it looks like, I mean, it looks like it'd be really cool. Like, to get an apartment here, I want to do that so bad. I want to get an apartment out of this place so bad. 
So I am literally going to contact a real estate agent and see what I could do because this looks really cool. But, like, this is her place. Like, check this. I can't film inside or anything, but, like... I just left and someone requested that I take a picture of the apartment. Now I couldn't film or anything inside, there's no photography allowed, so I just took a picture right outside. I just took a picture of the outside of the building. So that's what you just saw, the picture I took that I was requested to take. So that, that they requested I take. Sorry, I'm struggling with my words right now. I need to eat something. I'm like literally starving. So I'm gonna go to an ATM, get cash, and then grab a dirty water hot dog. You guys, I stopped Snapchatting so that I could save the battery on my phone in case I had to call for help. But the driver was literally, the cab driver was literally snorting coke in the frickin' in the, in the front of the cab. Like, at every light, they were snorting coke, and it was, like, really terrifying. And then, they, like, drove into oncoming traffic. <laughs> It was, that was terrifying. Oh my god, that was so terrifying. I, I almost said, like, let me out of the damn cab, but then we, like, we, we were right there. So I was like, you know, it's crew. But that was really terrifying, and I am about to call the cab company and make them aware of what the hell just happened. And actually, I'm not going into my room because I have to go out again. Literally, I'm supposed to go right back out, and I was about to go out to my room. And I'm like, nope, I'm not doing it. I actually have to go back out, so I'm I'm not thinking straight. That was so terrifying. That was so freaking terrifying and I can't even think straight right now. Like what the hell just happened? <laughs> what is with me and <laughs> getting the drivers that snort coke? What the hell? I'm never taking a cab again. Why is this my luck? What the hell? Hello vlog, okay. So, um, I look hideous, I'm in my readers, my hair is looking really bizarre right now, but um, I'm about to go to bed, it's the end of the day, and I need to get rest before my flight home tomorrow. Um, but I wanted to say something real quick, because after Naya left and after we got into that last fight, I was texting with her, and I did talk about it a bit in the blog. I was, uh, in the vlog, I was texting with her. So I just want to clear up, we're not really on good terms. I, yeah, like, we're on, like, 
acquaintance terms right now. I've been speaking to her a little bit, but like I'm basically avoiding her because I just can't get over what she did. And it's not like, you know, like I forgive her and stuff. And I've said it to her already because I don't believe in being fake or any of that. So I've, I've said it directly to her. But, like, I just can't get over stuff. And it's like... I, I've gotten over everything she did except this one thing. That I just can't... Basically what I'm trying to say is, like, I forgive her. I can't get over this one thing that she did. Which is the whole I'm getting my mom involved. I'm getting your mom involved bullshit. And that's because, you know what, we're adults. And an adult should be able to handle their problems. As an adult, I know myself, I am able to talk out problems with my friends. And I'm not going to go crying to my mommy or crying to my friend's mommy. And with what she did, like, not being able to talk it out, lashing out on me and then wanting to go cry to my mom and then cry to her mom... Like, I can't get over that. Because that's a two-year-old move. That is not an adult move. That's a two-year-old move. And I don't, I don't need two-year-olds in my life. Okay? I don't want my friends to be two-year-olds. I want my friends to be mature people. Like, you know, like people who are able to let loose, have fun, go clubbing. But at the same time, they're mature enough to talk out their problems. They're mature enough to be rational people who can acknowledge when there's a, an issue and talk it out like a calm, sane, rational person and not go, he hurt me, mommy, help me, which is like literally what she did. And I just, I can't deal with that. I can't get over that because it's pathetic. Quite frankly, it's pathetic. I'm not calling her pathetic, but I'm calling what she, what she did pathetic. I don't, what is this? I think it's a zit or oh, it's a, it's a scar, whatever. I'll pick that and get it off my face. Okay. I literally just picked the scar off my face on camera. That's how real I am with you guys. Um, and now it's bleeding a little bit. Okay. Um, anyways, I, I just couldn't deal with that. You know, I don't need, I don't need a two-year-old as a friend. So... I, I've said it to her. I said it to her when she FaceTimed me earlier. And it's honestly like I, I meant it. She didn't believe me. She didn't think I meant it. But I, I meant it. I meant every word because I can't deal with it. I can't get over that. So you know what? Like I'll be nice to her. I'll talk to her. I can be decent. But I'm not going to like hang out with her and have her as a full-time friend anymore because I just can't deal with that. Uh, I don't need a freaking two-year-old in my life. And I have... I have pushed people out of my life for it before. I had a friend named Lindsay who I pushed out of my life because I said, I don't need two-year-olds in my life. Every time there was an issue, she went crying to her mommy. And I was embarrassed to be around her. Like, what 18-year-old cries to their mommy every time they have a fucking issue? Like, I was embarrassed. I was thoroughly embarrassed to be around her. Granted, her mom babied her, which contributed. But it's, like, it's embarrassing. And not just that, like, if her mommy wasn't around to go crying to, she literally broke down in the middle of the street sobbing. And there were times where, like, she'd do it, like, twice in one hour or whatever. Like, it enough already. And she did it, like, five times in one week when we were hanging out, and I was like, I can't deal with this. And by, by the end of it, by, like, the fourth and fifth time, I, like, walked away from her. I was like, I don't know her. Bye. So instead of trying to comfort her, I was just like, who the hell is this crazy bitch tail in me? And breaking down crying like I literally like acted like I didn't know her and like I was really creeped out by her because I was embarrassed and I warned her I was gonna do that also like I tell you guys I'm as real as it gets like I'm not gonna just do shit without giving you warning like I give you warning and if I have a problem with you I'm gonna tell you straight up as it is 
And I, I warned her. I was like, you, you keep doing this. Like, this is what a two-year-old does. You need to shape up. And she's like, okay, I get it. And then does it again. And I was like, okay, next time you do it, I'm walking away and pretending like I don't know you. She did it again. I walked away. And eventually got to the point where, like, I just had to push her out of my life. So this isn't the first time I've had to do that. But I just wanted to just clear things up in case any of you thought we were still friends. Like, we're not. We're on acquaintance level right now. I don't know if she thinks we're still friends or not. I honestly don't know. But, like, I've already cleared it up with her on FaceTime. And I honestly feel this way. Like, I just can't get over what she did. Maybe, as I said to... As I said to Lindsay, when I pushed her away, like, maybe one day we can be friends in the future. But, like, like I've, I I said this t to Naya, and I'm, I said it to Lindsay, like, maybe one day we could be friends in the future, but, like, right now I can't. I, I, I can't. Like, they need to work on their freaking issues first. I can't don't want to be around that it's embarrassing I don't need someone breaking down crying I don't need someone lashing out at me and I definitely don't need people running to their mommies especially when they then run to my mom after like what the fuck if anyone knows my mom she's like an irrational fucking bitch like her friends have walked out on her because of it she freaking had me drugged when I was younger like hired people to drug me my mom is psychotic the only reason that I haven't pushed my mom out of my life is because she's my mom. I stopped bringing friends to home to my mom a long time ago. Anyone I've ever dated has not met my mom. Like, well, one person has. And they're afraid of my mom because they got to see the raw side because I literally had them, like, hide out and watch behind the scenes. <laughs> and they're terrified of her now. They loved her when they met her, and now they're terrified because they hid out behind the scenes and watched when she didn't know they were there. But, like, literally, like, I don't let people meet my mom anymore. I made the mistake this time, right, right before the trip, of having Naya go meet my mom, and then she wants to run to her crying. But, like, literally, no. Like, my mom's an irrational bitch, so especially when they go to my mom after, and it's not like I'm afraid of my mom or anything... But she pisses me the fuck off. And I'm in, like, a really positive space in my life right now, and I don't need that. So then, not only does her, like, going crying to her mommy piss me off, because it's like, what the fuck, you're, you're, eight, you're, you're 18, 19, why are you going to go crying to your mommy? But then to go crying to my mom, once again, it's like, what the fuck, why are you doing that? You're, like, 18, 19. But also, like, my mom's an irrational bitch, so she's going to freaking come at me yelling and screaming and calling me a mistake and shit and threatening me and shit. Granted, I've got so many things against her and I've got so many recordings that she makes one move, like, her life is over. <laughs> so, because it got to a point when I was younger where I had to start going around recording shit. Like, so she makes one move, her life is over, and she knows that she's screwed either way. She could threaten all she wants, she can't do shit. But it still, like, really pisses me off and I can't deal with it. So she comes at me, and then that gets me in a really neg negative space, and I hate living in the negative. I want to be positive. So I'm not, like, afraid of her. I don't have a... Uh, I, but, like, I have a problem with them going to her because, A, you don't do that. You're an adult. You talk out your issues with me if you have a problem with me, and you don't lash out on me, and you need to be open to hearing me out. Like, I will be open to hearing you out as long as you're open to hearing me out. Like, seriously. But also, like, going to my mom, like, literally causes her to freak out. So, I don't need the negativity. I've had to call the cops on her enough. I don't need it. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah. Um, so, I just wanted to clear that up. Anyways, I'm going to go to bed, get some rest, because I need some sleep right now. My throat's killing me. I'm exhausted. So, I'm going to drink some tea to soothe my throat and then I'm gonna get some rest um thank you for listening to this short rant um the ending of the vlog will start tomorrow morning when I pick up my camera and film the ending of it love you guys good night
leaving New York. See you soon, Florida. Bye, New York. I'm gonna miss my home. I'm gonna miss my hometown. Bye, New York. I fucking love that I get to ride around the limo. I'm so fucking lucky. I'm so lucky, honestly. I love this. It's actually a little uncomfortable, though. <laughs> Goodbye, New York. I freaking hate traffic. We're at a standstill again. And I am in a rush to make my flight. Yay! Beautiful fucking skyline in here. I love this. This is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. Like, I'm obsessed. I fucking love New York in the mornings, especially from this kind of view. When you get a view like this, like it's just so awesome. Like New York in the mornings, especially in this area, it's just, it's so beautiful. It's so gorgeous and I love it. We're at the airport. And I think I've got just enough time to grab some coffee and breakfast and make my flight. at the airport you guys we are here at the airport damn it there's no curbside check in I'm really pissed off okay whatever I have to grab a luggage cart. Oh my god. I think there is curbside check-in, but only for first class. How does it get better than this? Yep, Delta Sky Priority. First class, curbside check-in. How does it get better than this? Beauty of being Sky Priority. I got to skip all of this. <laughs> I got to skip that line. Airport. See you soon, Fort Lauderdale Airport. <laughs> okay, so I don't board till about 12.16. It's 12.04, so I'm going to get some food real quick. <laughs> By going right here. Uh-huh. Or right here. Doesn't really matter which you go to. I just need food. Gotta love this. It's like a freaking bar, right? As soon as you get to your gate. It's pretty awesome. I love that about LaGuardia. Yes. Yes. Start doing this when looking through the camera lens. <laughs> Been picking up my fries. They didn't have Pellegrino, so they just gave me regular water. And then I have a chocolate croissant here now. I'm gonna go try to find Pellegrino before we board, but first I'm gonna eat. Because I'm starving. They just made an announcement for my plane. They're still making it, actually. But they just said they're holding off on boarding because they're doing more maintenance tests. And now I'm starting the panic. Oh my god, I'm terrified. Like literally, I, I don't have panic attacks when I fly. My mom does, I don't. But like, that kind of scares me a bit. Like I might want to change my flight. That scares me a bit. Okay, we are finally on the plane after delays due to technical difficulties. We are finally on the plane. What are you gonna eat? What's the, what's the option? Uh, it's a smoked chicken and Gouda sandwich on a pretzel roll, or it's lemongrass chicken, which is like lemon noodle. Right. Um, the first one, please. The sandwich? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Do you either like the sandwich or 
ready. Oh, they're stuck in my hair. Why do my glasses keep getting stuck in my hair? Ready to fly. Okay, you guys, I have landed in Florida. This is going to be the end of this vlog. I am exhausted. I have had a long ass day. I think the majority of us were ready to get off that damn plane. Even the flight attendants had had enough. <laughs> like, literally they delayed our flight for like two hours because of technical issues. I think. By now, like, the majority of us have just had it, we're spent. And I have plans later, so yeah. I think this is going to be the end of the vlog. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I love you guys. Give this video a thumbs up. Give it a comment down below. And subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post if you haven't already. Bye. Okay, you guys, I know I said this would be the end of the vlog, but I lied, because I have to rant one more time. So, I literally turned around to walk back into the airport because I had to use the bathroom. And so everyone's lined up at urinals and we're all using the, like, when there's enough urinals, what you do is the first two people with urinals take the end urinals. Hopefully none of you girls know this, but now you're gonna know if you're watching. For any guys watching this, you know what I'm talking about. You could relate. But like, you take the end urinals. And then, after that, it's the urinal after the next free urinal. So it's like, every other urinal is taken. Well, not every other one was taken. And some guy comes up and uses the one right next to me when there's another one there. That is not what you're supposed to, like, who the fuck does that? So, like, I was really uncomfortable because, like, you don't do that, you don't use the, there should really be more spacing between them so that doesn't happen and that you don't have to worry about this shit. But there isn't, so, like, this is kind of what we do when you don't use the one right next to one that's occupied. That's not what you do. Like, who the fuck does that? The only people that really do that, hold on, wait. Nagish claim down here. The only people who really do that are the people who like to peek. It's not funny. Like, who the fuck does that? So, yeah, I just had to rant about that for a minute. Now it's the end of the vlog. Bye.